Over the past 24 hours, the Russians carried out more than 80 attacks along the entire front line, and Ukrainian defenders hit a Russian command post, a fuel and lubricants depot and five areas where Russian military personnel were concentrated. General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported this dot on the Kupiansk front, Ukrainian troops repelled 16 Russian attacks near the settlements of Sinkivka, Pishchain, and Beristov and Stelmakivka. In the Kupiansk direction, the Russian army is being replenished mainly by contract soldiers, Volodymyr Gonter, an officer of the 3rd Separate Tank Iron Brigade, told on the air of the telethon. They are raising their manpower and equipment and continue to put pressure on our positions. Take such actions to determine our places and strengths. In general, they replenish themselves very, very actively. People arrive who are even more prepared than those they hired. They don't count people. They have quite a lot of techniques, that's why they chase, the defender stated according to him, the day in the Kupiansk direction was as tense as the previous ones. At the same time, he noted that the defenders are ready for any development of events, in particular, a possible offensive of the enemy at the end of May, in June. The degree of tension is quite high even compared to the time of our counteroffensive. We are all very focused, Gonter said. Dot on the Avdiivka front, Ukrainian troops repelled 27 attacks near the settlements of Oleksandropil, Novoleksandrivka, Proors, Yevanivka, Novoselivka Prasha, Umansky, and Netilov. On the Novopavlivka front, Ukraine's defense forces are continuing to hold back the Russians near the settlements of Krasnohorivka, Koshchantanivka, Vodian, and Urushain, where the Russians tried to break through Ukrainian defenses 11 times. On the Sibirsk China and Slobozhenskaya fronts, the Russians maintained a military presence in the border areas, conducted sabotage activities to prevent the deployment of Ukrainian troops to vulnerable areas, and increased the density of minefields along the state border. Ukraine prepares new counter-offensive, U.S. administration unveils details. Ukraine will look to launch a counter-offensive in 2025 with the support of the approved $61 billion aid package from the United States as well as additional Western aid funding, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan told the Financial Times. He noted that he still expects Russian progress in the near term on the battlefield despite a new U.S. funding package approved in April because you can't flip the switch right now. Speaking at the Financial Times in Washington, Sullivan noted that with incoming U.S. weapons supplies, Ukraine will have the capacity to hold the line during the year 2024 and guarantee that Ukraine will be able to withstand the Russian attack. Sullivan echoed Ukraine's hopes that the country will move forward to recapture the territory that the Russians have taken. The publication notes that the clearest such articulation as to how the Biden administration sees the war evolving in the coming months in case of the re-election of Joe Biden as the president in November. The Financial Times notes that any new Ukrainian offensive would require additional military aid from Western allies, including the United States. The most recent $61 billion aid package from the U.S. took months to pass through Congress amid political infighting. Ukrainian officials do not rule out that the defense forces will be able to turn the tide at the front in 2025. In February, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that the armed forces of Ukraine were preparing a new counter-offensive. Experts at the Institute for the Study of War ISW believe that Ukraine should seize the initiative on the battlefield this year after U.S. security assistance reaches the front. U.S. officials have indicated their support for new Ukrainian counter-offensive operations in 2025, although ISW continues to believe that Ukraine should seize the initiative on the battlefield as soon as possible, given that if this initiative is given to the Russian side during 2024, it will provide Russia with a number of advantages. Ukraine's ability to liberate its territory and conduct counter-offensive operations rests on a number of unmade decisions in the West, Russia and Ukraine, and any external efforts to impose a timeline on Ukrainian counter-offensive operations ignore the reality of the battlefield situation, the ISW stressed. Ukraine could request Western military intervention, Ukrainian lawmaker. Kiev could request that Western troops be deployed on its soil if it deems the situation on the battlefield to have become bad enough, a senior Ukrainian lawmaker has said. In an interview with French broadcaster LCI, Alexei Goncharenko, who represents Odessa in the Ukrainian parliament, thanked French President Emmanuel Macron for not ruling out sending Western military to his country. 
the French leader earlier suggested that this issue could be put up for consideration on two conditions. First, if the Russians were to break through the front lines and second, if there were a Ukrainian request. Describing Macron's remarks as a very good signal to Russia, Goncharenko noted that foreign troops in Ukraine could be tasked with training Kiev's military and performing other missions without engaging Moscow's forces head-on. When asked whether Ukraine would ask the West for direct assistance if Russian troops were to approach Kharkov or Kiev, the MP said he did not rule out any scenarios. Yes, I think it is possible. If the frontline situation shows us that Ukraine cannot stop Russian President Vladimir Putin alone without European military support and troops, this is absolutely possible, he said, voicing the hope that such a drastic measure wouldn't be necessary. He also stressed that it would be in the EU's interest to heed the appeal for assistance that he described as it would be easier to stop Moscow with Ukraine than without it. Earlier, Emmanuel Macron said that he supported strategic ambiguity towards Russia, which he said is aimed at deterring Moscow. According to the French president, his stance on potential Western military action in Ukraine was in line with this approach. However, UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron has voiced scepticism about the idea, warning that NATO troops in Ukraine could be a dangerous escalation. This sentiment was echoed by Italian Defence Minister Guido Crossetto and by Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Zijato, while Slovakia's Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova has warned that nothing will remain of NATO forces if they are deployed in Ukraine.